So let's talk about Team Developer 7.0 Win64 applications. First, a bit of um, information. The biggest feature of TD7.0 is the new support for 64 bit applications. For the past 10 years, every new CPU from Intel AMD has been x64 capable, basically. And every release of Windows since XP and Server 2003 have been 64 bit capable. 2.8% um, of new PCs sold worldwide with Windows are powered by a 64 bit version of the operating system. What is X64? Processors which are 64 bit use 64 bit registers, and this allows them to address much more memory compared to 32 bit processors which could only address 4 gigabytes. Um, that's the theoretical limit. In reality, OS gives much less, but um, with, six, with Team Developer 64, you, will have, you have the ability to uh, allocate a lot more memory for your variables, for example, than you uh, ha had before. If you had memory problems, then uh, you know you need to go to 64 bits. So <coughs> then, a few things to know about um, Windows, Win32, Win64. Um, WoW 64 is actually Windows on Windows 64 which is an, an emulation layer um, for 32-bit windows on 64-bit windows. So it's called WoW64, but it's 32-bit, it's a 32-bit layer of windows. <laughs> yeah, funny Microsoft engineers. So basically it intercepts systems calls to the operating system made by 32-bit applications and transmits them to 64-bit calls and so forth. Um, and all this, includes um, the, let's say, the 32-bit Windows libraries that you might be using in your team developer applications to, ex to access Windows features. Um, these are stored in the SysWow64 folder. So it's called 64, but contains the 32-bit libraries. And then <coughs> the 32-bit uh, applications on Windows 64 are installed in this program files x86 directory. If the, I'm sure, pretty sure you saw that before. Why TD Win64? You get improved performance. Um, just checking this little application and it doesn't say anything about UX performance, so sorry about that. I don't have any data on that. But in general, it's a bit, it's a bit faster. Also, um, we have changed how we are compiling team developer itself from um, standard call to fast call, which means the, you know the, uh, the compiled application is faster, and the 64-bit compiler can make use of additional, additional CPU regis registers and instructions that allow kind of more uh, parallel processing. So <clears throat> there is a performance increase, and you see the um, performance index. Um, it doesn't say which is which here, really. So, but you see there isn't a difference between those two. I didn't try to create these on my own, but um, there is a good performance increase. And, as I said, you know, if you need gigabytes and gigabytes of memory, basically you can easily allocate them, load an entire video into memory if needed, or uh, a SQL-based database file or whatever. So with um, TD Win64, you, you also get 64-bit capable database drivers, but you can also leverage 64-bit capable database drivers by Oracle, um, Microsoft SQL Server, Sybase, and so forth. So if you choose to use uh, TD Win64, you need to use 64-bit database drivers. And you need to use 64-bit external libraries, so DLLs that you have included, including the Windows DLLs, need to be updated to use the 64-bit Windows DLLs. And the, the work to um, align the parameter parameter types needs to be done for 64-bit, so because the, the width of certain parameters changes on Win64, of course. And you never know when Microsoft decides, you know, when, when they will drop Win32, so that 
they have created versions, I think, of Windows Server 2016 where there's no um, 32 bit support available anymore. So, in the future, you might end up, you need to go to Win64 at some point, probably. We don't know when that is yet, but so we, we are ready, we offer you everything, though you can do that. So, what's different in Team Developer 64 bit? Team Developer ships with two installers, one for x86 and another for x64. They are both un unlocked with the same installation key, and both versions can be installed on the same PC. The last one installed will determine which IDE is open when opening TD project files from the Explorer. The default location um, from x64 differs from x86, so we keep it in mind if your application depends on that, you know, on the directory structure and everything. The IDE, Report Builder, and other tools are native 64-bit applications. For Report Builder, the Report files are binary compatible with 32-bit versions, so you have no issue with those. And how to differentiate between the two IDEs? Um, in the Start menu, you get a different header text. The title bar of the Windows that I couldn't show because that now sharing thing the, of GlobalMeet comes in between. And um, I think, do I have it open now? No. If I start TD, and go through here, oh yeah, you see it here, x64 7.0 application, for example. Uh, and it's also, of course, noted in the About dialog, what you're using. And, let me see, that's also, <clears throat> on the right-hand bottom side, there's an X64 indication as well. What's different, um, SQL base and routers. The 64-bit version of TD ships with the 64-bit version of SQL base. So, Supported routers, SQL Base 12.0, so that includes 12.1 now. SQL Base 11.7, SQL Base 11.6 using the 11.7 drivers. Oracle 11G, Oracle 12C, and a range of Microsoft SQL servers, 2008, 2012, 2014, and 2016. SAP, which used to be Sybase, ASE 16, the 64-bit OLEDB client, or 64-bit ODBC drivers. So this can be used with Team Developer Win64. There's a different registry key being used um, for the software settings of uh, for TD Win64, and there's a different program data location for x64 and x86 versions as well. So you have different SQL and I files, for example. So how to migrate? Um, binary compatibility. Due to the way TD stores binary outlines, .f files created with the 32-bit version of TD cannot be opened by the 64-bit version. Only text outlines can be shared between the two. The IDE will automatically migrate outlines to text and open the text version. A warning prompt will be displayed before migration as original file will be modified. So this is when you open a file from an older version, let's say from 6.3, to 7064 bit, then, and that is binary format, then we will automatically convert that file to um, text format and save it as text format and create a backup copy of the previous file. Dynalibs must be recombined to be used in 64 bit applications. So if you're using Dynalibs and you create 64 bit and 32 bit versions of your application, you need to have two versions of your Dynalibs, one with for 32-bit and one for 64-bit. External functions, that's where it's getting a little tricky then. You must take care to ensure proper data types are used for external functions. So, <clears throat> we saw some sample test applications internally that were using the Win32 APA to create, create menus. Um, in MSDN, those functions are defined as using integer types, but in the TD application, um, verb was used to define um, the, 
which would work, you know, because it's of similar size. But on the new platform, you would need to really use integer here. Um, so you need to change the interface. <clears throat> you need to check out for those pitfalls. Um, and then <clears throat> we also changed the uh, byte alignment um, for structures. So if you're including structures, then you need to do some um, alignment as well. So the offsets that are being used are different. The data types, um, you know, if you if you use D word D double word pointers, you need need to use these 64-bit equivalents in the future. And if you have 32-bit active X controls, you will need to replace them with 64-bit active X controls. So, for example, <clears throat> we had that Excel question before. If you have included the Excel, ActiveX, or Com server into your application from a 32-bit Excel, and you want to run that, bring that over into um, Win64, then you would need to recreate the ActiveX on Win64 with a 64-bit uh, Excel version. There's a new SAL API that helps you if you need to have code that's um, platform-dependent. Um, so there's a function called sal is x64. So you, you, know, you can run that function and find out if um, if you're running on six, x64, and then um, do maybe calculations differently based on uh, you know whatever you need to do. Um, here, note about .NET issue with this function. If you are using this function sal is x sal is x64 on .net and you are in uh, you are in um, test mode so basically best press that green run button in the IDE then you will always get back a the 32 bit answer well because the test application will always be 32 bit on .net mm -hmm. only in the production the, the build version will then be 64 bit so keep in mind that you might think we, I found a bug, but So if SAL is x64, set CV, setting a checkbox to true, and setting a data field to td 64 bit app. Else false td 32 bit app. Let's run this. So you see it's a 64 bit app now. And if we Change the build settings now to .NET. And run this. Then it should report it's Win32, even so it's... The end result might be a 64-bit application. Because on .NET you can say the 32-bit, 64-bit, or any CPU, so it would decide at runtime what fitness to use.
Oh, here it comes. <laughs> I need a faster machine. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Is X64 is alright? They fixed this issue. Well, wow. Interesting. So, what I've been telling you. So, it's apparently now a 64 bit application. Oh, no. It's more complicated than I told you. It depends on the business of the IDE. So, the .NET. <laughs> on if you're using Win, the Win32 IDE, then it creates a Win32.NET application for debugging. If you are using the Win64 IDE, then it creates a Win64.NET application. That's where. That's what I should have said. Just go back to the build settings, and if you go here in advanced, you see that you can. Oh, this one is set to autos here. So, 32-bit, 64-bit, or automatic. Okay, any questions regarding Team Developer 64-bit? 